Wow. So here we have the ride along review of the new Yamaha T7. Now this helmet cam video gives you my first impressions of the machine on and off road. As well as giving a running commentary as I test out this adventurous machine in the San Bernardino mountains. So without further ado, let's jump on board and go ride. So here we are then riding the new Yamaha T7 adventure bike. Oh my goodness, I've been looking forward to this for such a long time. I've only been on the bike a few minutes, but the stance is so comfortable, I love it. The engine feels good, it feels torquey, it feels like there's plenty of power for the street. Really looking forward to seeing what this can do on the dirt. So we're now off the freeway, just heading on some back roads to also where we're going to find some smaller roads and hopefully then some trails. And it is gorgeous out here, look at it. There's nobody out here, just a bunch of motorcyclists. Pulls out the corner really nice and smooth. Good suspension, not too much. Shifting, uh, going forward or back, it's just a really nice smooth ride. It pitches into corners really nicely there. I just picked up because of the car, but it picked up so quickly. It's always more, a bit more difficult to feel the rear brake lever with big motocross boots on. But uh, it feels like a good solid back brake with some good feel. It doesn't just lock up or anything like that. Look at that, beautiful. Corner's lovely. I expected it actually to feel a little softer and a bit more bouncy on the road, but it didn't. It feels, you know, there's obviously a lot of suspension here, but it's not throwing itself forward or back and pitching too much. Wow, there's some cool looking storage. Gotta love the country. So here we are now at the off-road section and this is the bit that I must admit I've been really looking forward to. So what we've got to do now is just quite simply just with this one button here, press and hold that for five seconds and then ABS is going to be off and we're in off-road mode. If you do turn the ignition off, turn it back on again, it goes straight away back into road mode. So. Just remember that. Anyway, I'm at the back of the group here, so I'm probably, more than likely, gonna end up in a, in a big dust trail. Okay, so usually adventure bikes off-road just generally just feel so heavy and clumbersome. Look at that, straight away, just some little technical stuff here. Ooh, nice, a bit off camber. Oh yeah, this thing's great. So it's still 450 pounds, so it's not dirt bike light, but it's definitely for an adventure bike. Woo! It's got some uh, maneuverability, and that's what you want, you know what I mean? When you go off-road, you just want to be able to not really be afraid of the bike at all. You want to have confidence that your machine's going to get you through places, and it's going to get you over bumps, and you're not going to you know, be struggling with the bike all the time because big adventure bikes, you know, once you get those things kind of going a little bit in the wrong direction or you get a little out of control, they're really hard to bring back into control. Whereas a dirt bike is light, it's nimble, and then that just makes it so much easier. So the T7 here, it's nimble, it's got a really nice balance. That's what I like about this thing. So it's some good power when you need it, but for the rest of the time, it's just really smooth. Oh yeah, beautiful. Steer around the corner by just opening the gas and sliding the rear. It feels really good over these bumps, I gotta say. Hi sir. Adventure bikes are just not this easy to ride off-road. This thing's brilliant, loving it. I've ridden a lot of adventure bikes. In fact, all of them. This straightaway is by far, by far the best off-road. It's gorgeous, it's great, it's so much fun. 
I just feel confident with it. You know, this road is not the most technical, okay, but it's definitely got its uh, pitfalls and uh, you can soon find yourself, you know, in a little bit of trouble here. Whereas this thing's just making light work of it. You know, and that's what I like about riding bikes in different terrains. You know, it's so much fun riding on the road and then being able to see a trail, hit a trail and know that your bike's capable. And that's why I really fell in love with the Ducati Scrambler because it was just a bike that was just really easy to ride on road and off road. And it gave you that kind of sense of freedom that, you know, could easily handle light off road trails. No problem at all. And it was also a really fun street bike. This is a very playful machine when it comes to the dirt. I like the smoothness of the engine as well. It's not, there's nothing there that's, you know, catching you out. It's just got great all round power, but just smooth, you know? So the ground's getting a little softer in places. I just had like a little feeling there that the front on something soft, where it just came straight back, it gave me good feedback as well. Yeah, I like the way that you can actually pick your lines as well on this bike, it's good for that. Big adventure bikes, you could just not ride it in the same way. You don't have that same sense of freedom on a big adventure bike. You have to be very much more, much more cautious in these situations. Whereas something like, you know, an XR 650 or even a KLR 650, you know, these, those, even those bikes handle the, these, this, this sort of stuff easily. And this bike is uh, very much the same. Now where those bikes fail is when you get them on the street, they're not really that street worthy. The KLR is better, but I always found like, I enjoy the KLR more when I was um, hitting a trail or, you know, getting off the highway. Whereas this bike feels good on the street. We had a quick blast on the highway, it was fine. Felt great through the corners, through the twisties. So, you know, you've got a bike that performs on the street, but you can also do this with it. <laughs> Go and have some fun. The suspension's really soaking up the bumps well as well. So I'm not getting like anything harsh back through my, through my hands or through the handlebars. Obviously I'm getting some shock back through there, but it's definitely soaking up a hell of a lot. Some softer sound there. Just handles it well, man. The bike, very versatile. Some rocks, some tree roots. Loads of stuff sometimes that just catch you out. But so far so good with the T7. Just soaks it up nicely. Hi guys. Ooh. It's a little soft there, but good feedback. Just open the gas, it straightened itself out easy enough. Take that weight off the front. Woo! Ah. So if you stall it, the ABS stays on. If you turn the ignition off or hit the kill switch, it goes off. So now I should just be able to hit the start button and go as long as I don't turn the ignition off. Yeah, also I forgot to mention that the tires felt great on the street. Pirelli, I have to say, do a blooming great job when it comes to like the tire that works on the street and uh, also off-road. I've had it on the Scrambler, I've had it um, on other adventure bikes and uh, the Scorpion Rally. Great tire and it does, it feels good on this too. Front tire feels planted, it doesn't feel like you know, it's too road based or vice versa on the road. It didn't feel like it was too off-road based, which is 
pivotal really that you've got good feeling in both situations and then same for the rear it's definitely the not the got the biggest knobs on the tire for like a motocross bike it's not as aggressive as that but it's definitely is able to kind of give you some good traction off-road and also give good feedback wow glided through there you never know with streams you know you get boulders in there they can really send you flying or in a different direction and if you've watched enough youtube videos of motorcycle riders crossing streams <laughs> can definitely end in tears wow that was uh could have ended in tears on a bigger bike easy whoa this is a bit more technical Okay, we're on a bit of single track, so a little tighter, a little bit more technical, and uh, see how the bike feels on here, but so far, so good. Yeah, usually you'd only want to be coming down here with an enduro bike, to be honest with you. Nice, a sort of technical section. Some soft stuff here. Ooh, yeah. Couldn't see quite see there because it was all dusty from the rider in front of me. Up over a tree route there. As well, I'm off-road, there's a lot of you know usually clattering and banging that can come from a bike, but this bike's really quiet as well. That's what I like about it. I don't feel like it's falling apart off-road, you know. Sometimes street bikes off-road can sometimes feel like that. Like you're really kind of doing some damage, but I don't feel like that here. But yeah, the balance of the bike is what's particularly good. Because I can just stand up on the pegs, I've got loads of room to manoeuvre my body. And, uh, you know, take all these bumps and help the bike and help myself and move my weight around. And that's what this bike's really good for really in control of it the ergonomics work really easy the bike's slim and with it also being slim you know that's kind of very dirt bike-esque as well you know you can get some of these adventure bikes and they've got huge saddles and okay they're pretty comfy when you're going hundreds of miles in, in them but they suck when it comes to riding off-road because you need that maneuverability of your body you need to move your body around off-road is all about kind of adjusting your body all of the time to what's going on and how the bike is handling stuff so skinny bike thin bike allows you to just do that easily and this is definitely nice and slim so feels good feels good around my knees the gas tank my feet so uh, like it it's not much about this bike i do not like at all i think the only thing i can figure out so much so far is the dash <laughs> seems to be a bit of an attraction to dust so it's not always the easiest thing to see but hey i'm not even hardly looking at it because i'm looking at the road ahead it's a minor thing it's like there i can just keep in the same gear just nice and slowly feather the clutch. A few rocks there to negotiate, just soak them up easy. This feels so good. I don't think there's an adventure bike that I've currently ridden that could do some of this more technical stuff and it feels as easy. There's definitely bikes that can do it, don't get me wrong but you know you've got to also look at your experience as a rider and what you're going to get out of it and if you're nervous when you're riding a bike it's not exactly the most enjoyable thing and so taking a big adventure bike off road you're i'm always nervous it's easy for the front to just plow 
into something soft and you took the front and then you've got a huge bike to try and pick up. <laughs> technical sections there you would have struggled to get up there on a bigger bike not with this what I like about it as well is when you pull in the clutch and you've got good balance so you can go slowly and you can think about things you don't have to just go for it and just hope for the best because sometimes with bikes and obstacles you kind of have to do that at some point but Like this then don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell but most important whenever you can just go for a ride Whoa. I like it when a bike save you from a crash okay off we go